Well, that was a little tune called Swindon, followed by my favourite Northumbrian jig, and there's not many of those, uh, called Alistair J. Sim. It was written for the author's nephew. It was written by Willie Taylor. And I once heard him say in an interview, I mind it's a grand tune. He doesn't deserve it. <laughs> Didn't think his nephew was quite up to the tune. Um, so I'm going to sing you a song now. This is a song about inner beauty. She didn't look too good on the outside. Now it's in a bit of Northumbrian dialect, so you're going to have to concentrate. Alright? Concentrate. But if, if you don't, you'll get it. Now there's a chorus, and if you can pick it up and join in, it would be lovely. So just have a think, and, and by the time I've finished and done it twice at the end, Maybe you've got a little bit of it. Now I'll give you a bit of mine to help you remember what's next. I'll tell you some of a nice young lass, her name is Sally Gay. I met her in the pub one night, down upon the quay. I says to her, I know your face, but I've driven her from where I asked her where a boot she lived and she mentioned Carlisle Square But never mind the luscious kind and I know she is good hearted Got a cast in her eye, makes her look shy and I wish we never had parted She's got a pump and she walks with a stick and she's always good to me I'm fond of the last that men can pass the last turn on the key. You got that chorus now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now every meet I used to meet Miss Ali on the key. I asked her if she'd marry us and if she'd be good to me. How long it is since she washed herself, I really divin' now. She's got a face like an old spice cake, as black as any crow. But never mind the luscious kind, and ah, uh, she is good hearted. Got a cast in her eye, makes her look shy, and I wish we never had parted. She's got a pump, and she walks with a stick, and she's always good to me. I'm fond of the last that men can pass, the last stone on the key. She caught me walking out one night with her sister Mary Gay. She gave us such a tig on the look that she could barely see. And she turned to me with a look like a kill and she told me where to go. And I thought I could tell her that I loved her still. She was up with another man. But never mind the luscious kind and her, she is good hearted. Got a cast in her eye, makes her look shy, and I wish we never had parted. She's got a pump and she walks with a stick, but she's always good to me. I'm fond of the last that men can pass, the last stone on the key. That's coming on very nicely now. <laughs> <laughs> now it was all through her, I went on the drink and had long tea the bad. Upon my watch and upon my chain, it was everything I had. And then the next morning the landlord came in and he hired us through the door. And I spent six months in Durham jail with the clothes put into store. But never mind the luscious kind, and ah, she is good hearted. Got a cast in her eye, makes her look shy, and I wish we never had parted. She's got a pump and she walks with a stick and she's always good to me. I'm fond of the last that men can pass the last down on the key. But never mind the luscious kind and ah, uh, she is good hearted. Got a cast in her eye, makes her look shy and I wish we never had parted. She's got a pump and she walks with a stick and she's always good to me. I'm fond of the last that men can pass. The last stone on the key. Well done.
Now, some of you might know I've only just moved to the Hawke's Bay in the last year. Before that, I lived in Australia for a while. But before we could move here, we had to sell a house that we rented out while we were in Australia. So we had a bit of work to do on it. Now that house had been a great place for us to live. It was up in the Waikato. It was, it was a lovely place with an amazing view and quite a lot of bush. And we really loved living there and we had some amazing musical things happen to us there. People like Johnny Handel came and stayed with us because he's a, a long friend of mine. And uh, you may not know that name, but he's great in the Thumbrian music. And um, he wrote us a tune about the beauty of the place and the beauty of the view from it. And another friend came to stay who's a, um, a really great musician who I've taught to play these things. And he played, uh, he wrote a hornpipe um, after he'd been at our place for a day. And both of those tunes were, were named because of our house. One, the Waikato Valley, and the other uh, by Rowan Johnson. It was called the Port Waikato Hornpipe. And while I was helping my hubby prepare the place for sale, my little heart was breaking because I saw of the place. And the way I worked this through in, inside was to write a song about it. So it doesn't hurt anymore to sing it. It's all right now. <laughs> because I've moved to the Hawke's Bay and I've found the most beautiful place that overlooks the Nanaroro River and we're busy building a house there. And we'll make music there, I can tell you. But I've still got a song I wrote that's farewell to the Waikato. So all three go together in a great big long trilogy, so if you want to go to the toilet, you'd better go soon.
followers. Um, one of the people who gave me great instruction on these pipes and was a very patient tutor was Joe Hutton. Lovely man. And he was a tall, quiet shepherd who played an ivory set very, very beautifully. And you'd go in for a quarter of an hour with Joe, quaking, thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to have tuition from the great Joe Hutton. And you'd play a tune best you could for him. And you'd go, ah, now that was very nice. Very nice. And then he'd tell you what you could do to improve it. He was just such a lovely tutor. So I'm going to play for you a tune that's dedicated to Joe. It's Joe Hutton's March. And then I'm going to play the tune that started him off on his career of playing. He was walking through the town and he heard a busker playing on the uh, Northumbrian small pipes, playing Parnell's March. So I always think, although it's an Irish tune, it must have honorary Northumberland citizenship because it started Joe Hutton playing the pipes. Could you have a better reason to be adopted? So Joe Hutton's March and Parnell's March.
and bottle seat too. Now I first started singing in the homebrew concerts that were on in several of the festivals in New Zealand. I haven't done much singing before that. Um, and a, a particular guy, Frank Winter, if anybody knew him, said to me, come on now, Helen, you can sing a song. Oh, Frank, I don't think so. Yes, you can, you're on next. Oh, right? <laughs> so I sang the only song I knew, and it went down very well, and I started singing. So I learned this next song in the homebrew concerts from a very, very nice man. Um, it was written by Bob Watson, and it's about the Molly Mork, and it's about the legend of the Molly Mork being the spirit of a dead sailor. And it's just the most glorious song. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Oh, there, there is a chorus you'd be surprised to hear. There's actually two choruses and they sort of alternate. One's the short version and one's the long version, but you'll pick it up as you go. And it would be lovely if you could join in. Oh, the southern ocean is a lonely place Where the storms are many and the shelter is scarce Down upon the southern ocean sailing down on the restless water and the troubling skies You can see that Molly Mork wheel and fly Down upon the southern ocean sailing Down won't you ride the wind and go white seabird? Won't you ride the wind and go Molly Mock down upon the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn See the Molly Mock floating on his wide white wings Oh Lord, what a lonely song he sings Down upon the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn Oh, he's got no compass And he's got no gear And there's none can tell you How the Molly Mork steer Down upon the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn Won't you ride the wind and go white seabird Won't you ride the wind and go Molly Mock Down upon the southern ocean down below Cape Horn He's the ghost of a sailor man as I've heard say Whose body sank and his soul flew away Down upon the southern ocean Down below Cape Horn And he's got no haven And he's got no home He's bound nevermore 
for to wheel and roll down upon the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn Won't you ride the wind and go white seabird Won't you ride the wind and go Molly Mook down upon the southern ocean down below Cape Horn When I get too weary for to sail no more Let my bones sink better far away from shore Down upon the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn You can cast me loose and leave me drifting free I'll keep that big bird company Down upon the southern ocean sailing down below Cape Horn Won't you ride the wind and go white seabird Won't you ride the wind and go Molly Mook Down upon the southern Down below Cape Horn Won't you ride the wind and go white seabird Won't you ride the wind and go Molly Mook Down upon the southern ocean down below Cape Horn. Thank you. So this is one of Eric Vogel's songs that means such a lot to me. I'm going to share it with you because I think it's just a great song. And I think the musicians that are here will agree with me. And even if you're not a musician, you probably understand the process here. Music means to you, that's what music means to me. 
Thank you very much for being such a lovely audience. 